with the power of my spider rotating robot, nobody can stop me. Nobody. <laughs> oh, I'm so done. This thing is disgusting. This is episode two, and uh, what we're doing is rotational motion, which is pretty close to the last thing we did, translational motion. If you didn't see it, go check it out now. Video link will be in the description, and uh, 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 yeah, anyway, video link in the description. <laughs> so today we're going over rotational motion, which is basically the same thing as translational motion, except you're making objects turn in a circle. So before we were doing this, run forward, run backwards, run left, run right. Now we're doing rotational, so you can go in a circle like that. Um, and I can show you a quick demonstration, and there's only two commands to do the basics, um, but we're going to be going over some more complex stuff. So as you can see, the thing is spinning in a circle, and um, so it's the same command as last video, which is this one, where it's teleporting the back passenger to the boat, and likewise, pa back passenger to the boat. I just took his specific one here. Um, I can always just, you know, go like this. These don't matter. I was just copying some of the commands from his world. Um... But see, nothing mat doesn't really matter. I actually would like to know if those numbers make a huge difference uh, if he watches this. But anyways, so then this next command is basically all you have to add, which is rotating the boat, negative uh, 10. And you can change this, but this is going to be your rotation. So the boat is using, if you hit F3, you can see right here, these are the numbers that you're changing. And it's just, they change as I look left to right. So likewise, the boat is going to change left to right as we change these. So if I set make this a set number like 10, it's just going to face 10. But if I make it tilde 10, it's going to rotate 10 of like 10 degrees each rotation. So it's going to rotate 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 20 times a second. So basically every second, the, uh, the way that the boat is facing will be an additional 200 degrees, which is quite a bit. So that's why it moves in such a big circle. So it's a tight circle. Uh, that's why this number affects it quite a bit. So 3 times 20 would be 60 degrees a second, uh, which is a pretty big circle. And I'm also, I have a quick diagram to show you guys how this works. So it looks a bit complex, but uh, let's just go over it piece by piece. And you don't really need to know most of this. Anyway, so this is a boat. This is the boat. This is the back passenger, the one that's going to be, uh, the boat is going, it's going to be teleported. You know what I mean from the last video. Um, but anyway, the boat's going to teleport to this passenger, which is going to make it move forward. And that's what this orange arrow is. The orange arrow is the arrow of the motion. So the boat is moving both forward and to the right at the same time, uh, which gives you a turn. Now, the, uh, this right here is just a line I drew, uh, to show the overall motion. So these two combined orange arrows, if you combine them, you're going to be moving in a red arrow. Um, some of you may know what, like, may understand this. Some of you may not doesn't make a big deal. Um, so the degree right here, this blue line, is the degree that the boat is turning, which will directly affect the radius of the circle. This is the center of the circle that you're making. This is the distance the boat is from the center of the circle. So it's going to make a huge circle here off the screen um, since it has such a large radius. This is your radius, right? So by incre increasing the, um, the degrees here, you're decreasing the... Uh, you're decreasing the overall radius of the circle, and by making it smaller, you are making the radius of the circle bigger. And that's really all you need to know. Also, I have a quick equation here, which I don't think it's 100% for certain. Um, I haven't done this kind of physics in a while. I'm more onto the tougher stuff. But anyways, um, this is fairly close to what it should be. Um, but basically what it's saying is, depending on how fast your... Uh, your boat is moving and depending on what angle your boat is angled at it'll affect how big the radius is so if you are moving really really fast you're going to have i believe a higher radius yeah if you're moving fast you're gonna have a higher radius if you're moving slow you're gonna have a small yeah if you're moving fast you're gonna have a bigger radius small you're gonna have a small to slow you're gonna move have a slower radius and um to change the velocities a little bit harder or change how fast it's teleporting 
Um, since we're using this method, I mean, I guess you could just put multiples of these, but we will be going over how to make the vote faster in a later episode. But for now, let's just focus on the basics. Make this number big, you're going to have a tight circle. Make this number small, you're going to have a large circle. And uh, you can use this to make varying circles and to make shapes. And I'm just going to close this for now. Uh, we'll check out this more. Um, so you can use this to make varying shapes and you can make it say like for five seconds, you can use a scoreboard here if you know what I'm talking about. But for five seconds, you can make the boat rotate this way. And for another five seconds, it rotates the other way. So you can make a cool little wavy line. And you can also do this, uh, you can do this for a, a many, 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 many different things. Uh, you can make it for some kind of mob attack or some kind of maybe like a surfer particle, if you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, just give me a moment here. Okay, so if you saw Dragon's video, I'm assuming most of you guys kind of know this kind of part of the community. But if you saw Dragon's video, he made a video a while back on how to make a flame ring in Minecraft. And it used like 30 command blocks. But using this method, you need three command blocks and three entities, and you get a nice, cool-looking flame ring. Let me just reduce this here so you can see it a lot better. Uh, I'm not really calling out Dragon. I mean, he's a really good command block uh, maker, and I would never have known how to do this if it weren't for uh, Gamer Guppy showing this off. But I was just thought this would be a way easier way to make a fire ring or make a, some kind of server particle if you have a server and you want to make a vanilla particle on it, which, I mean, I'm probably going to do that on my server. Um, you would just use these to make the cool particles like as seen on uh, Mineplex where they have like the player particles. Of course, you'd want to teleport the boat way higher, which is something we went over last video where the boat is above the player instead of uh, right there. And you would also want to create a system to make it follow the player. But any either way, I mean, you see, you get it. There's a ring and there's fire. So I just thought that was cool. That's one thing you can do with this, a very simple thing. All I did was just add a command here that executes at the boat. And it um, does the particles. And you can also make players take damage that are near the boat. Uh, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Um, but now we are going to go over a second portion of this, which is basically a combination of the two principles or whatever you want to call them. So we have rotational motion, one. We also have translational motion. This is the second half of translational motion, which I just want to go over really quickly. Um, it's basically just we have a set of commands that test if the boat or the passenger, I believe, is in a wall. So if the passenger is inside a block, then what it'll do is it'll turn the boat around. So this boat will just, you know, it'll rotate all the way around and go back the way it came, right? So if we combine the two, it'll do something pretty cool. And I'll show you right here. So, first, we have a boat. Some of the boat. Second, we have this. So, you can see the boat going back and forth, right? So, this is just a quick little thing. Boat turns, boat is actually turning 180 degrees each time. It's rotating a different direction um, because it hits, encounters a wall. Now, we can make something search, kind of like a um, custom bouncing wall boomerang. If we add this to it. And we'll have particles so it's easier to see. But as you can see, it just bounces off the walls and rotates and goes nutso. So let's just let it free and let it just go around the world. Have fun. Yay. Anyway, um, but as you can see, it kind of searches its way. And once it finds a wall, it's going to continue um, around. So it's going to try to rotate around an object effectively since we have such a small radius. It's going to basically encompass this entire object. Um, and rotate around it without really leaving it or going through it. So it kind of goes around odd-shaped objects, which is cool. So you, uh, one thing that I can immediately think of for this is maybe if you add a high rotation, let's just see what happens if I add this to be like 20. Let's see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, adding a high rotation actually gives you a uh, like a odd-shaped radius effect. So I can have a bunch of these going, and I or I can make this thing summon a bunch of things, and I can basically encompass an object. And uh, this is just really interesting for people that know more about command blocks. Um, but if you have a effect, if you have like a weird-shaped room, and you want players to get an effect in the room, or if you have some weird-shaped object and you want players to be affected, you usually have to use either a radius or a square radius, which creates a square. This lets you make a weird shaped radius which is really cool um and as you can see it's a pretty nice effect that's pretty much all i have to talk about this this is some really cool stuff that gamer guppy came up with and i really love it it's going to be useful for so many things um you may not know right now but i mean you can make really cool weapons and really cool 
uh, effects and items and really cool stuff. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and this was kind of helpful in explaining how rotational motion works. Remember, the bigger the, the, bigger the uh, degree that the thing is turning, the tighter the circle. That's pretty much it. Um, other than that, guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all later.